Hello friends, I hope you are well. Welcome to this week's Dirt Report, home of tech and telco news from all around Australia and some international tidbits. We have some really interesting tech stories for you today. In fact, some concern the current global situation and I cannot use the specific word for at least another 60 seconds. Or a YouTube will strike me down like a heathen it thinks I am. Maybe I am. Honestly, it's amazing how much effort goes into reporting on events without using particular language and words. So in today's show, we have Telstra Payphones, Office of the Australian Information Commissioner finally goes after Optus and NBN Co cancels a whole load of appointments because of reasons. Then on the international tidbits, we have Apple cracking down on its own users, breaking privacy, but for a very good reason. Then on the tech related but pandemic news, we now have access to a digital vaccine certificate. Thanks for jumping in. Make sure to tap the like button if you like this video. It literally helps with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you'd like to support us. If you haven't already, check out the Nielsen NBN research panel, share your NBN speeds and get rewarded with points to turn into vouchers for places like Amazon and Bunnings. Links below for more details. So let's roll the intro and get started. Let's start with Telstra. The Telstra Exchange Forum lit up this week with news of payphones around Australia being made free to use. Now there are still over 15,000 payphones all around Australia and now you can make local and national calls for standard fixed line and mobile numbers for free. Yes, that's right, absolutely free. Now, payphones have been around since the 1880s in Australia and until 2021, they have certainly been making some sort of money. But today, however, within the advent of personal mobile devices that are smaller than a brick, these non-time machine boxes have been slowly decaying and costing Telstra quite a bit of money. So these payphones have been a godsend during natural disasters and it looks like they will continue to be a part of Australia for much longer. I'm sure the government also kicks back a few dollars to keep them running. So in the blog post, CEO Andrew Penn, links below, had said, I know payphones are also a lifeline for thousands of vulnerable Australians, the homeless, the isolated, those escaping domestic violence, and often provide only link to critical support services and those that care about them. Last year alone, Australians made 11 million calls on payphones, which is mind blowing, including more than 230,000 calls to vital services like triple zero. So there's no doubt payphones are already often the lifeline that's there when it is needed most. Whatever you think of Telstra, this move is net positive for everyone. Let me know your thoughts below and tell me if you've ever had to use a payphone. I'd love to hear about that story. Let's move on. Two years after Optus let loose 50,000 customers' personal information to the white pages, the Office of the Australian Information Commissioner has finally opened a formal probe into the event. Now, if you remember, Optus mistakenly sent over 50,000 names, addresses, and mobile phone numbers to census, which were then published online and potentially printed in an old thick book that randomly turns up on your doorstep and then you throw it straight in the bin as you walk back into your house. Now Optus then decided to use real life mail, as in paper mail. You know, the stuff that travels really slowly uh, to contact the people whose information was leaked. The information commissioner statement said, the public disclosure of personal information against the wishes of individuals may have the potential to cause harm. The OAIC investigations can determine whether such matters involve systematic issues that can be prevented by ensuring the right practices are in place. Now, in line with the OAIC's privacy regulation and action policy, no further comment will be made while the investigation is ongoing. We shall see what the investigation reveals. Links below for the full announcement. Let's move on. NBN Co had to defend the cancellation of nearly 58 thousand appointments as this week the June Senate Standing Committee documents were released showing those numbers. It looks like during April 2021, NBN cancelled 30,184, which is about 15% of the total 195,622 appointments. Then in May 2021, NBN cancelled 27,790, which is about 13.9% of the total 199. 742 appointments. You see, NBNO had to explain why they had this many cancellations. They just said it's quite common for appointments to be cancelled, but they did give a few examples of the reasons why things might get cancelled. If a service is working and the appointment is no longer required, that's a reason, obviously, there is a network incident and multiple customers are affected by a mass outage, such as a fiber cut, well, they're not gonna go visit that one person because obviously it affects a lot more people. They'll try and fix the problem at the top. Before the network incident is declared, there may be appointments booked by customers for service faults, despite the network component is the issue. So obviously the work being done somewhere else. 
These customers' appointments will subsequently cancel once the customer's fault is resolved at the network level, so that's why a cancellation can happen. Then when a technician calls a customer on approach of an appointment, the customer may cancel the appointment as their service is working or they're not home during the appointment time. Now, sometimes the issue resolves by itself, i.e. the customer may have replaced some of their hardware like the modem, which was causing the issue in the first place, so they didn't need to see an NBN tech out. That one, I think the RSP should be able to help you with, but nonetheless, here's a couple of reasons. I'd like to put it back to you. Do any of these reasons marry up to what you've heard or have gone through yourself? I'd love to know. You see, a few months back, there were some reports of NBN canceling appointments without giving a clear reason or just not turning up with no reason at all. So I'm keen to hear what you guys have seen. All right, it's time for some international news. So make sure to like this video if you did and subscribe to support us. Now a quick content warning, this story has a sensitive topic. Apple has talked about privacy for a long time. You may even remember back in Las Vegas, they made a giant billboard on the side of a building touting that what happens in Vegas stays on the iPhone or something along those lines. Well, this week, Apple has announced that the privacy will be broken for one very important reason, protecting minors from sexual abuse. Apple has said it will implement an AI-like system that will scan and check photos on iPhones, only in the United States for now, before they are uploaded to its iCloud storage device. The detection is to ensure that the upload does not match known images of child sexual abuse victims. If an image is found to match, it will trigger a human review. However, it will still be reported to local law enforcement anyway. Apple also said that the system is designed to reduce false positives to one in one trillion. Obviously, there's a lot of photos out there. So how will this system work? Well, law enforcement officials maintain a database of known images and translate those images into numerical codes that positively identify the image but cannot be used to reconstruct them. That database will be stored locally on your iPhone. Apple has also used a technology called Neural Hash that are designed to catch edited images similar to the originals when somebody tries to get around this technology. When a user uploads an image to Apple's iCloud storage service, the iPhone will create a hash of the image to be uploaded and compared against that database that the law enforcement continuously update. However, photos that are only stored on the iPhone are not checked. And Apple has said users who feel their account was improperly suspended can appeal to have it reinstated. On the other hand, privacy advocates said the system could open the door to monitoring of political speeches or other content on the iPhone. Apparently, it's a slippery slope. Let me know what you think about this. Has Apple done a noble thing or is this a concern for true privacy? Are we down a slippery slope? Let's jump back into the Australian tech scene. This week, the Australian government announced that those who have received their full dose of the COVID-19 vaccine are then able to add their vaccine certificate from within the Medicare app into Apple and Google digital wallets. This sounds great. However, people have been warned to turn off cloud backups on their devices to mitigate the potential of their certificates of ending up on international cloud servers, even if it is under Apple or Google because Data sovereignty. As far as warnings go, this one does sound a bit serious. However, I don't believe any user will actually turn off their cloud backups. After all, it's a brilliant feature and I feel like many don't care where their data is stored anyway. So if you do decide to add the certificate to your wallet and in sync with the cloud, you will acknowledge that Service Australia will not be accountable under the Privacy Act of 1988 in relation to other third party handling your information. You're pretty much giving up your rights if somebody uses that to do something nefarious. Right now, that certificate is not internationally recognized anyway, so it will only be useful in Australia. But Service Australia have said they are expected to roll out a universal certificate in the future that will end up on your wallet, your digital wallet. And on that notion of 1984 in 4K, we have to end this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like this video if you did and smash that red subscribe button to support us. And if you haven't already, check out the Nielsen NBN research panel, share your NBN speeds and get rewarded with points to turn into vouchers for places like Amazon and Bunnings. Links below for more detail. Thanks for watching and bye.